Good morning. Today we're going to start, well, today is Sunday the 18th, and we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John chapter 11, verses 25 through 26. In one clear and simple sentence, Jesus summarizes his life, his mission, and the entire gospel plan. He is the resurrection, the first fruits of them who slept, the first to rise from the dead. He is life through his atoning sacrifice. We can be forgiven, experience a mighty change of heart, and become new creatures in him. All who are dead physically or spiritually can be brought back into everlasting life only because of him. His, atone his atonement, death, and resurrection make immortality and eternal life possible for all humankind. Those who believe in him and strive to keep his commandments will never die in any, ult in any ultimate sense. They are the valiant, the faithful, the the believers who live, whose lives declare unwaveringly, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. All right. So today is John chapter 18, verses 21 through 40. And in these verses, um, he's being questioned by Pilate and Peter denies him. Um this account gives a little bit more context. Uh, I remember, when was it, like a week or two ago, how I was saying, I wish I could see this, this questioning, this interrogation um, uh, a little bit better, a little bit more clear, and this gave um, a little bit more. So they take him to Pilate, and um, what do they say? Uh, Pilate say unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. He's like, Why did you bring him to me? There's nothing wrong. Like, what's with this dude? What do you want me to do to him? And the Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. And so they're like, Legally, lawfully, religiously speaking, we can't do it. So we need you to do it. How they can justify this in their heads, I have no clue. Um, but Pilate has found nothing wrong with him. And he says, there is a custom where I can release one, one prisoner at Passover. Who do you want? And they say, Barabbas, who is a robber. Okay. So that's what happens in this chapter. Let's see what Ludlow has to say. Okay. Uh, um, verses 21 through 40. Okay. Um, so he's being questioned by the high priest and he doesn't answer straightforward. And one of the guards hits him and says, answer us thou the priest, the high priest. So, um, that could have been more literally translated, is that the way you answer the chief priest? That Jesus maintained his equanimity and submissiveness even under the provocation of a blow dealt by a brutish underling in the pr presence of a high priest is conformatory of our Lord's affirmation that he had overcome the world. One cannot read the passage without comparing, perhaps involuntarily, the divine submissiveness of Jesus on this occasion with the holy, natural, and human indignation of Paul under somewhat similar conditions at a later time. The high priest An Ananias, displeased at Paul's remarks, ordered someone who stood by to smite him on the mouth. Paul broke forth 
in angry po protest, God shall smite thee with thou whiteth wall, whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. Afterward he apologized, saying that he knew not that it was the high priest who had given the command that he be smitten. So it's just giving two examples here. How Christ handles somebody hitting him, and how Paul handled somebody hitting him. And they're quite opposite. And I think I would go Paul's route. Um, Zachary, he tried to like full on punch me and natural instinct was to just stop him. Uh, it was, it was like just a reflex and it, it was not calm and I didn't let him hit me. And then we had a nice little discussion afterwards. No, excuse me. This is going to hurt. Okay. I didn't sneeze. Thank goodness. Okay. Jesus's answer could have been translated in verse 23. If I spoke wrongly, bear witness concerning the wrong. But if rightly, why do you hit me? For verses 28 through 39, um, Jesus had been convicted of blasphemy by the Sanhedrin, a Jewish but not Roman crime. So when Pilate asked, what is the what is the charge against this man? Their design were their designs were temporarily thwarted. They were seeking a Roman execution for a Jewish death sentence, a thing Pilate could have could have approved. But now it appeared Pilate was taking original jurisdiction and wanted to try the case over again. They replied probably through Caiaphas's spokesman. We have already tried him. He is guilty. We come to you to endorse our sentence and order the execution. Pilate, uh, Pilate replies, if it is a Jewish crime and not a Roman, judge him according to your law. Their answer, we cannot put a man to death. You must do that. This was not true. They could have executed Jesus by stoning if Pilate had approved their death sentence. But such an execution would have caused a riot among the people. Jesus had many followers in Jerusalem, and their conspiracy called for a Roman execution, one that could not be questioned by the people. The, the effect of their plan would be, as John says, to fulfill Jesus' saying that he would be crucified. The Jews stoned their victims to death. Rome crucified hers. And both divine providence and Satan's mortal helpers were now combining to assure the decreed type of death. Knowing now that they have failed to gain a Roman crucifixion for a Jewish capital offense of blasphemy, they immediately charged, changed their charge to high treason with three counts in their indictment. He is guilty of sedition by stirring up the whole nation, of forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, and of assuming the royal title. Man, they just won't stop, will they? Uh, for verse 29, Roman governor and procurator of Judea, Samaria, and Idumea, Pilate, resided normally in Caesarea on the Mediterranean shore, but had come to Jerusalem during the Passover to help keep order. Appointed in 26 AD, he served for 10 years. He was then summoned to Rome to answer certain charges made against him and was banished to Vienna in Gaul, where he is said to have committed suicide. Oh my. Okay. Um... We'll do one last one for verse 38. The position in the sentence of the Greek word translated again makes possible two interpretations of the last sentence. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, or after saying this again, he went out. Oh, I keep thinking I'm going to sneeze and it's going to hurt my neck so bad. Pilate's question, what is truth, 
has elicited many commentaries, including these thoughts by Elder Bruce R. McConkie. The issue is not so much what is truth, in the, sen in the sense of separating truth from error, and thereby being able to know with finality that any specific doctrine or principle is an eternal reality. Hence we find the revealed definition of truth saying, And truth is knowledge of things as they are, and as they were, and as they are to come. Truth, thus, is a purely abstract sense, in a purely abstract sense, is the thing which actually is. But truth, in the sense of separating it from error or untruth, is the knowledge which men have of what actually is. To illustrate the fact that there is a God is a truth in the abstract sense because it is a verity that actually is, but the knowledge that God is a personal being in whose image man is created and not a Con, con Garys of the law operating throughout the universe is the ultimate and specific answer to the question what is truth where deity is concerned oh, okay that's all I can handle for today I'm going to leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. Today is the 19th. This one, oh gosh, is from Erasmus, slightly adapted. We yield thee hearty thanks, O Lord Jesus Christ, for thine unutterable love in vouchsafing to redeem mankind by thine own death. And we beseech thee, suffer not thy blood to have been shed in vain for us, that we, growing up in thee, by continual increase of heavenly strength, may become fit members of thy mystical body, which is the church, and never swerve from that most holy covenant which thou madest with thy chosen disciples in the Last Supper, by distributing the bread unto them, and by reaching them the cup, and through them with all those who thou baptized through all those who through baptism are grateful unto thy company. Sorry, that was difficult. Oh gosh. Okay. That was John chapter 18 verses 21 through 40. And this next week we do Matthew chapter 27, Mark chapter 15, Luke chapter 23, and John chapter 19. We will see you then.